Okay, good morning and welcome to Sunday School. Um, it's been, what, two weeks now, hasn't it? It's good to be back, so I hope you didn't forget everything from two weeks ago. All right, we, we're talking about navigating the Bible. This is going to be part two. And it looks like there's going to be a part three and maybe part four. I mean, so hopefully we'll have fun with all that. Are you all enjoying it so far? Yes. Okay, good. Well, let's start with the word of prayer, okay? I'm exhausted, so pray for me too that, that I would have the strength and the energy to do this. Lord, we just come to your prayer. We just ask you, Lord, to feed us today. Lord, we're needy and we want you to uh, show us something and teach us something. And we just ask that you do that today. Help me, Lord. I know you said your, your uh, strength is made perfect in our weakness, Lord. So I just come to you, Lord. I'm weak and I'm just asking you to uh, show up and to, to speak to us and give us something in Jesus' name. Amen. So get started today in 2 Timothy 2.15. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, a verse that you should know. Amen. I hope you have this one memorized. I know Ray likes this verse. This is a good verse. And you know what? New versions change this verse. Ha, huh, go figure, you know. What do they do? They take out the word study. The only command in the New Testament to study the Bible and new versions take that out. Almost like they want to hide something, don't they? Almost like they don't want you to study the Bible. I wonder what. Interesting. So 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study. To show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And that's what we need to do. That's what we're trying to do is rightly dividing the word of truth. So I kind of tongue in cheek called it navigating the Bible, going through the whole Bible and looking at it. And do you realize that the whole Bible is written for us to read, but not everything in the Bible is to us specifically? There's different what we call dispensations. And there's different ways to read the Bible. There are various ways to study the Bible. There's covenants in the Bible, different covenants. We could go through the Edenic covenant and then the Noahic covenant and the Mosaic covenant and all that stuff, but we won't. That's a different lesson. There's dispensations. You know, there's the dispensation of innocence, the dispensation of conscience. And brother, you're going through the dispensation. So there's different ways to study the Bible. Well, what I thought is let's look at it a different way as we rightly divide. Let's look at the different ministries in the Bible. You know, I've never heard a pastor preach the different way to rightly divide through the different ministries. But you know, there's different ministries in the Bible. Some of the ministries are to us. Some of them are not. And so I don't know if you remember, but a week or two ago, I said, are we under Jesus ministry today? And somebody said, yeah. And I said, well, let's look at that today and let's see. Because if we're under Jesus' ministry, we have to cut off our right hand, don't we? <laughs> so when I talk like that, people say, oh, Robert Breaker's against Jesus. No, I'm not. I'm in favor of rightly dividing. Mm -hmm. A lot of things Jesus said that are good for us to today. Amen. But a lot of stuff that's for us today from Jesus was revealed to Paul, the apostle. So what we did last week is we looked at the most basic division in the Bible. Old Testament, New Testament. And here's the cross where Jesus died. Over here, what do we have? We have the law, the Old Testament. And then over here, we have the New Testament. And we're in the age of grace. Amen? And I thank God for that. What a basic division. And as we go through this study, what I'm trying to do is to show you what the Bible actually teaches, but also to warn you of different denominations, if you will, that are cults. Because they don't rightly divide. And last week, I hammered real hard. Last week, it was the week before. What? The seventh day who? <laughs> yeah, because they think we're still back over here. It's like, no, something happened that changed things, and that was the blood of Jesus. So there are a lot of places in the Bible where something changes. And it goes on a little while for that, and then it changes. And it goes on, and there's a lot of transitions in the Bible. The book of Acts is a book of transition. Amen? And I can't wait to get to that, but I don't think... We'll get to that today. But when I look at the Bible, the Bible is like a mirror. And it's just incredible to me. The Old Testament and the New Testament, it's like the cross is a mirror. And a lot of things that take place in the Old Testament are types of things that take place in the New Testament. So when you read your Bible and you see that, you go, wow, this is cool. Well, let me draw something up here for you because this is kind of cool too. So I'm going to put two circles here and I'm going to put two circles here. Now, what is that? Well, this is part of our study, all the different ministries. And last week we saw Moses, and for something like 1,500 years, the nation of Israel was under the law of Moses. I guess you could say that was the ministry of Moses. <laughs> Even though he died, he gave them something from God that they had to keep for 1,500 years until something changed. 
Then something changed, and up shows a guy named John, John the Baptist. And we looked a little bit at him last time. I want to look real quick at his ministry and what was preached. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the different ministries, and we're going to look at what was preached. And I'm going to ask you what ministry are under today. After John was Jesus, then we have Jesus' ministry. Then was the apostles' ministry. And one of the apostles was Paul. And God gave Paul something that he said, hey, go tell these other apostles because this is the way it is now. Because something else changed. So it's a change, change, change. There's lots of changes taking place in the Bible. And if you don't rightly divide, you're going to get mixed up. And that's what a lot of churches to do. You know what a lot of churches today do? They read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they say, now we take our doctrine from it, and they forget the rest of the Bible. And there's nothing wrong with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, except for whose ministry is it? It's a ministry back here, and it's still for Israel. Are we Israel, or are we the church? So you've got to rightly divide by reading the entire Bible and understanding some things. So quickly, we've got a lot to get into. I won't go to Galatians chapter 3 again, but Galatians chapter 3, verse 24, 25, what did we find out about the law? The law is the schoolmaster, right? Isn't that funny? The schoolmaster. Now, probably a lot of you didn't go to school and have a schoolmaster. That's like back in the 1800s, the teacher was called the schoolmaster. Now we just say teacher. But master, if someone's your master, then you are literally under them and you have to obey them. And they used to spank kids in school if they didn't obey the school <clears throat> master, right? So under the law, the law was your master. So you were under the ministry of the law. You could say the ministry of Moses. You had to obey that law or else. So we're not under that today. Up shows John. What happened with this guy named John? Well, well before I get to that, we'll turn to Luke 16, 16. But uh, as you're turning to Luke 16, 16, I'm going to read 2 Corinthians 3, 6. I've got so many verses here, it's hard to... To know which one to go to. So you're turning to Luke 16, 16, and I'll read 2 Corinthians 3, 6. And 2 Corinthians 3, 6 says, and this is Paul speaking, who also have made us able ministers. Remember, we're studying the different ministers and different ministries. Who have also made us able ministers of the New Testament. We're not under the old anymore. We're under the new. And it says, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. <laughs> we're not under the letter of the law today. We're under grace. And they're just two completely different things. So the sooner we understand that, the better. And the Bible says the law was the schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Because what does the law do? It shows you're a hopeless sinner that can't save yourself. So you need someone to save you. So it points to, hey, trust him because he'll save you. Okay? Well, when we see the ministry of John, guess what the ministry of John is? John's ministry is all about pointing people to Jesus. <laughs> and so that's kind of cool. And a lot of these ministries over here are all about pointing back to Jesus. So it all goes to Jesus because who is Jesus? God manifests in the flesh. All right. So we love Jesus and we trust Jesus. He's our Savior. But we're not under the ministry of Jesus. We're under the ministry of Paul today. How, how do we know that? Why? Well, we're going to get into that. I'm going to explain all that to you. And you can't deny it because I'm not teaching a denominational teaching. I'm just reading the Bible and rightly inviting it. And that's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. So Luke 16, 16. What does the Bible say? Are we under the Old Testament law? No. Something changed when a guy showed up named John the Baptist. And Luke 16, 16 says this. I have to find it real quick. You all have it. Luke 16, 16 says, And the law and the prophets were until John... Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presseth into it. So the law and the prophets were until John. So if you're reading your Bible, you go, oh, well, John shows up and something changes, right? So we got a different ministry. Now, he had a very, very, very short ministry, John the Baptist. But he came, and he showed up, and he started preaching something that was different than what the law said. And who told him to preach it? God. So this is a different dispensation, a different ministry, a different revelation, a different teaching than what it was back then. So when God comes and shows you something different, you have to accept that. But people today go, no, it can't be different. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah, he's the same. He doesn't change. God's attributes are always the same. But God can deal with people differently. I've got three children. I don't deal with them all the same way. <laughs> some of them are girls, some are boys. I'm a little more rough with the boy than the girl. Does that mean I change? No. But the way that I deal with people is different. So God can deal with different people in different times in different ways. And he does. So God 
gave us a prophecy way back here. Well, actually he gave it to the Jews in the book of Daniel of a 70 weeks. And if those people were reading their Bibles, they would have known, hey, somebody's going to show up. Exactly like this prophecy said. And that somebody was going to be the Messiah. But the religious leaders, the Pharisees, I guess they weren't reading their Bible. Because up shows this guy in the wilderness, John the Baptist, to go, who's he and what's he doing and why is he there? Well, if they read their Bible, they would have gone, this is it. And they would have accepted him. But did the Pharisees accept him? But the people did. It almost seems like the religious leaders were an apostasy. <laughs> but the people that actually read their Bible weren't. We always need to be Bible believers, don't we? So we looked at a little bit last time the ministry of John. I want to just quickly re reiterate what that is, and then we'll get into the ministry of Jesus today. That's my hope, and uh, hopefully we'll have time to do that. So John chapter 1, what was it that John the Baptist preached, and what was his ministry? Are we under his ministry today? If we are, it's a works gospel, because John's ministry was a works gospel. And salvation is not by works today, according to Paul. So John chapter 1, and I look at John chapter 1, and starting in verse 19. John 1, 19. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. Hey, come on in. So it's all about the message of the Christ. Christ is the anointed one. The anointed one is the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. That prophet was the coming Messiah. Prophesied in the book, of, I believe it was Deuteronomy. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? And he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Esaias, which is Isaiah. And they which were sent, and they which were, sent were of the Pharisees. And let's see, I want to read down to verse, um, oh, let's, let's uh, skip and go to verse 26. 26. John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. He it is who cometh after me is preferred before me, whose shoe latchet I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Bethabara beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. So John is baptizing in water. Well, today there's people that run around and they say, if you want to get saved, you have to be baptized in water. And they say, salvation is through water. If you read the rest of the Bible, is that what the rest of the Bible says? Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1.17, 1 Corinthians 1.17, he says, Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. So it's the gospel that saves, it's not the water. But if you only read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you, and you look at John's ministry and you think you're under that, you'd be thinking, man, I've got to get dunked to get saved. <laughs> But that's not salvation for today. Someone's not rightly divided. You have to read the whole thing. That was back here. Okay? So you go there to um, verse 30. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh the man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. So why John the Baptist's ministry? He tells us right there. So that I can make manifest to Israel Somebody. Who? The Christ. So he's telling these people, and we're going to look at it here in a second, what his message was. But he's telling Israel, he's telling these people, you better get ready because the Messiah has showed up. Why water? Well, what if, I don't know, I won't say the president because I don't know about that. But let's say some great big dignitary showed up. Let's say, I don't know, governor of Florida said, I'm going to be in the meeting here this week. Would you all go outside and work all week and not take a shower and we all come here stinky so that when he's here we're all just stinky? No. Usually when somebody's like, you know, a dignitary, you, you go take a bath and you get your best clothes on and you try to present yourself, you know, clean. Well, don't you think that's what he's saying? Hey, get clean because here comes the Messiah. I mean, that makes sense. He's the king of Israel, Jesus Christ. So the king is coming. So we don't have a king in our country, thank God. But if we did and the king invited you to come to his presence... Would you go, man, I ain't going to take a shower? <laughs> or would you clean up and put on your best clothes and say, hello, king, it's, so, it's such a pleasure to meet you. Well, that's what's going on here. It's, hey, get clean because here he comes. All right? So this isn't salvation. This is get ready because he's coming. Does that make sense to you all? Let's go to Matthew chapter 3. And here is the message of John the Baptist in Matthew chapter 3. And it's a works message. Now, if you know your Bible... Today, we're under the ministry of Paul, and Paul says we're not saved by works, lest any man should boast. 
So we're seeing two different things. Now, can the Bible contradict? If it does, then God's a liar. Because he said one thing out of one side of his mouth and another out. God's not a liar. So there must be dispensations. Amen? And when you rightly divide, you see, oh, so that's why this is said over here, because something changed. Now he says this over here. That's the only way you can read your Bible and reconcile it in which it doesn't have any error or, or contradictions. So here's what John the Baptist came preaching. Matthew chapter 3, verse 1 through 3, and then verse 6. Matthew 3, 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye for the kingdom of what? Heaven is at hand. So it's a kingdom message. He's preaching about a coming kingdom. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Esaias, which is Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And, well, I would read verse 4 and 5, but for sake of time, let me just skip down into verse 6. Look at verse 6. And were baptized of him, of him in Jordan, confessing <laughs> their sins. <laughs> so... Is that what we do? Are we coming here every week to get baptized and then confess our sins and what we did this week? Boy, we'd be like, mm, I got the dirt on this guy. I mean, we, we wouldn't like each other too much because we know each other's sins. Wouldn't we? That's a different time, a different message to a different people. Right. But what was the message? It was repent and be baptized and confess your sins. Because the message was about a kingdom and a king. So do you see how his is not the same ministry as ours today? We are not saved through John the Baptist ministry. If we were, then we'd have to confess our sins, repent, and get water baptized. Do you realize there's a church called the Church of Christ, and they tell you that's how you're saved? Mm -hmm. That shows me that they haven't read the whole Bible, and they don't rightly divide. They're going back to a different time, to a different person, to a different ministry, and trying to say, now, we like that one. They have a buffet gospel, if you will. They're going to you know, these famous buffets, and they're picking and choosing what they want on their plate for their doctrine. You can't do that. You have to go, no, no, no. Okay, it's laid out like this. This was back then. This is now. Where are we on the timeline? What? So we're not under John's ministry, are we? So that was John's ministry. Look, let me show you another thing real quick, too. Matthew 14. Matthew chapter 14. While you're turning to Matthew chapter 14, let's see what happened to John the Baptist. Let's see what, how it ended for him. But also, reading the rest of the Bible, we understand there's a thing called the tribulation. And then there's a thing called the millennial kingdom. And the millennium is the kingdom. So he came preaching a kingdom message. What was he saying? If you'll accept Jesus, he'll reign over you for a thousand years. Did they accept him? That's why things changed. That's why we have the church age, because they rejected their Messiah. And if you read your Bible, you can't help but see that. But what happened to this guy, John? He had a very short-lived ministry. And this is what happened to his ministry. This is why he wasn't a Joel Olstein. Okay? Because if he had chosen not to do this, he would have had the greatest ministry in all of Israel, most likely, and been very rich. But he decided, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to call out sin. Something Joel Elstein doesn't do. Right. Remember when he did that interview? And he says, um, well, uh, who was it? Larry King? And he says, why don't you preach on sin, Joel Elstein? And he says, well, Larry, I want people to come back. I remember seeing that. And it's like, so all you care about is people coming and putting their money in the offering plate. You don't care about making straight the way of the Lord, if you will. So what does it say there? Matthew chapter, um, where did I say? 14. Boy, for sake of time, I don't want to read all of verse 1 all the way down to verse um, 10. But if you have a chance, write that down and read that later. What happened in this passage? He preached against the politician of his day. And look what he said in verse 4. For John said unto him, it is not lawful for thee to have her. Herod was living in adultery. And John the Baptist said, you adulterous person. He said, oh, you're going to jail. <laughs> and they killed him for preaching on sin. A lot of preachers today don't preach on sin because they don't want to be persecuted. But this guy, man, I, I like John the Baptist. He had guts. He stood up and said, you bunch of fornicating, adulterous devils, you need to stop. <clears throat> they killed him. Well... The Bible tells us we need to preach against sin. Amen. So that, that's what happened to him, and his head was on a charger. They, they literally beheaded him. When I hear beheading, you know what I think about? The tribulation. They cut people's heads off in the tribulation. There are a lot of things in the future that we see back here. It's just so uncanny, you know? It's interesting, isn't it? Like the tribulation, is that the same gospel as for us today? He that endureth to the end. Where would that be in our mirror back here? Well, Noah had to endure to the end of the flood. You, know, it just, you look at the Bible that way, this way, it all matches. It's just so amazing, so amazing. 
So we see that is John's ministry. Now let's go to John chapter 1, verse 17. Let's look at Jesus' ministry. So John's ministry was very short-lived, and it was basically him showing up and saying, Hey, Israel, get ready. Here's the king. Here's the Messiah. Here's the Christ. And oh, by the way, quit sinning and do right. Well, amen. But that's a works gospel. Is that how we're saved today? It, but there are churches all over America and all over the world that teach that. They're in the wrong dispensation under the wrong ministry, aren't they? You would think they would see that if they read the rest of the Bible. Do they even read the Bible? <laughs> that's what I want to know. So, John chapter 1 and verse 17. Look at what it says. Now we look at Jesus' ministry and look at John 1:17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Well, if that's not dispensations, I don't know what is. Back here was the law, over here it's grace. And something changed. And it all points to Jesus. So we're no longer under the law. We saw that last time in Romans chapter 6. You are no longer under the law, but under grace. So when Jesus came, he came to change things. And he brought grace. And what did he ultimately do? He died on the cross for our sins, and his shedding of blood is how we have remission of sins. If we trust the blood of Christ, then we're forgiven. Amen? So, wow, what grace that he loved me enough to die for me. But in his earthly ministry, did Jesus preach, hey, just trust my blood and you're saved? It hadn't been shed yet. So the ministry of Jesus was before the cross. We're on the other side of the cross. So what are we doing trying to get back over here on this side if that's what saves us? You know a lot of churches do that. They try to get back over here, and they forget that over there. What was Jesus preaching, and for who did he come? This is what I want you to see. Let's go to some verses. Matthew chapter 4. What was Jesus preaching when he came? Okay, Jesus didn't show up and say, hey, you're all saved by faith, just believe what I say. He showed up to Jews under the law, and he said, now you just keep the law, but you believe in me. Why did he tell them to keep the law? Because he knew the law was the schoolmaster to bring them to Christ, and that he hadn't died yet. So if they would continue in the law, then after he died, then they would see him and say, oh, now I need to trust in this. So that's why Jesus in his earthly ministry was saying, keep the law. He's not saying it today. Because we have Paul, and God revealed to Paul, it's not the law. And I can't wait to get to that, to see the message revealed to Paul. So Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, look at this peculiar teaching of Jesus. This is what Jesus came preaching in his ministry. Matthew 4, 23, look what it says. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of what? Of the kingdom. And healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. So Jesus' message was a kingdom message. Look at chapter 9, I believe it is. 935. 935. Matthew 9.35, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. So, he's preaching a kingdom message. Is that the salvation today? The kingdom message? <laughs> but that was the message that, that Jesus was preaching. He wasn't saying, everybody trust my blood, you'll go to heaven. He was saying, hey, there's a kingdom a coming, are you ready to enter it? So, the king, what is the kingdom? It's that. So he's preaching to the Jews, telling them, I'm ready to reign over you if you'll accept me. There's a huge group in the world today called the Jehovah Witnesses. What is their message? If you ever listen to those people, all they talk about is the kingdom. They don't read the rest of the Bible. They stop right there. Can you imagine? So, but the Bible says that first the rapture, then the trib... So they're literally wanting to get into the tribulation to get through the kingdom. They've got their message from Jesus, and that's great, but before he died. So that's not so great, <laughs> because they're getting a message that's to Jews, and they're trying to apply it to themselves. That's the problem. So let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 15, all right? Who did Jesus come to? Did Jesus come in his earthly ministry to Gentiles? As a matter of fact, he did not. These are Jesus' words right here, okay? Look what it says in Matthew chapter 15, verse 21 through 24. Matthew 15, 21. All right, you believe in Jesus, right? Okay, we'll go by what Jesus says. Matthew 15, 21 through 24. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word, because she was Gentile. Isn't that interesting? And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. Now, he did eventually help her, because of his grace. 
But look at what Jesus says. This is Jesus' confession of what his ministry was for and to who he went to. 24, but he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Jesus Christ confessed, look, my ministry here on earth was to Jews. So how could we go back to that and try to apply that to us for salvation? If we do, we get a works gospel. Because Jesus taught works, just like John the Baptist was teaching a works gospel. Paul, he says, no, not of works. It's by faith alone. <laughs> so you're seeing some different things here. And if, if you're not saved and you read this, you go, well, the Bible's full of contradictions and you throw it, throw it away. But if you read this and you're saved and you go, I want to rightly divide, you go, oh, well, that's because that was to them back then. And this is to us over here today. And you see the difference. So watch this now. Let's go to Matthew chapter 10. People love to argue, and I don't like that. But uh, when I started preaching on YouTube a lot, uh, someone sent me a video of a computer voice. And it's like, Robert Breaker is a heretic. And it was a woman. It was even worse. It was a woman computer voice. Robert Breaker is a heretic. He teaches. Blah, blah. And I preached a, a, a message, Jesus' ministry versus Paul's ministry, and I showed the difference. And this computer, and I don't know, can a computer be saved? I don't know. I guess it was a lost computer. Said, Robert Breaker is a heretic because he teaches we're no longer under Jesus' ministry. Well, we're not under Jesus' ministry. We'd have to be a Jew, wouldn't we? <laughs> if we were under Jesus. We're, the ministry today is the ministry of Paul. And guess what? Paul says, everything I learned, Jesus taught me. <laughs> so the only way to follow Jesus today is to follow Paul because Jesus told Paul what is for us today. Does that make sense? I guess that computer didn't understand. I was just waiting for the computer to say, does not compute, does not compute, but it didn't. It never said that for some reason. But so Jesus, in his earthly ministry, he had some disciples. Now watch what he tells his disciples. Are we Gentiles? Before we were saved, we were Gentiles. Now we're saved, we're part of the body of Christ. But there's Jews and there's Gentiles. Watch what Jesus says to his disciples before he died in Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 through 7. Matthew 10, 5, these 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. Does God hate Gentiles? Why would he say that? Because he's still trying to deal with the Jews in his ministry. So that was for them. We're over here. We're not back there. And when you understand that, you see that, you go, wow, that makes sense. I'm going to show you here in a minute the preaching of Jesus. And it's brutal. And I just say, thank God we're not over here. Thank God we're over here. Because Jesus is telling you to do some things that you just go, are you serious? You want me to do that? Thank God it's not for us. But see, there's a lot of people that don't understand that. There, there's a lot of cults out there that just like to go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John because they want to work gospel. They won't come over here to the true gospel of faith alone. So continue reading there. He says, go not into the way of the Gentiles. Verse 6, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay? And preach what? Verse 7. And as you go, preach saying that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. So their message is to Jews only. And it's a message of what? Kingdom is a coming. Yep. So do you see that kingdom message? Is the kingdom message for us today? Well, there's two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. I believe they're different. And the kingdom of heaven is this. The kingdom of God, the Bible says, is spiritual. So when you're saved, you're in the kingdom of, of God. That's the spiritual kingdom. But we're not in the physical kingdom, which Jesus is literally here on earth reigning for a thousand years yet. So there's two different kingdoms. But Jesus was preaching this kingdom to the Jews, saying, hey, if you will accept me, I will reign for a thousand years over you. And he could have done that back here. But did the Jews accept him? No. So we must also remember Daniel's prophecy of the 70th week and how Jesus showed up and all this stuff. It all ties together. And Jesus showed up exactly when the prophecy said that he was supposed to. And Jesus' message was a kingdom message to the Jews. It was, accept your Messiah, accept your Christ, accept the promised seed of Genesis chapter 3. And if you accept him, then he will rule over you. What did Jesus preach while he was here on earth? Let's look at that. Okay, so are we under Jesus' ministry today? Well, no, because Jesus' earthly ministry was for Jews at that time. And because they rejected him, we have the rest of the New Testament, and we read through it, and we realize, oh, okay, well, God says, you Jews rejected me, then I'm going to go to the Gentiles and let them get saved. Right. Paul, come here. <laughs> You know, so you got to understand all this. You got to understand all this. But let's actually look at some of the preaching of Jesus. And let me ask you if you want to do this. 
All right. Mark chapter 10, verse 17. Do you want to be back under this? First of all, you're back before the cross. So if you're trying to get back under the ministry of Jesus earthly here on earth, you're trying to forget the blood and go back to before he shed his blood. Is that salvation? So we've got a problem. So when I preach like this, people that aren't saved, they go, well, you're against Jesus. I am not against Jesus. I am all in favor of showing you the who and the why and the what and how that was then. But now we're over here. That's called rightly dividing. And you've got to see that. It's kind of like a bank, you know, you get a bank and you get all these things and then they change the rules on you. Well, I wish you could go back and go, no, 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 I want the old rules, but they won't do that for some reason. You ever had a bank say, we're updating it and you go from 0.03% interest to 0.001 or something? You're like, but I want to go back. They won't. I don't know why they do that. I don't know why they can just change the rules on you, but they do. Well, God changed the rules and thank God he did because now it's by faith and grace through faith. I'm glad we don't have to go back under that. Right. right? So quickly, Mark chapter 10. We're just going to look at some of the things that Jesus literally preached in his earthly ministry here on earth. And I'm going to ask you, knowing what Paul preached, is this for us today? Mark chapter 10, verse 17. Mark 10, 17. And when he was gone forth unto the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Here comes a guy to Jesus during his earthly ministry and says, I don't want to go to hell. I want eternal life. What do I do? Look what it says there. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. And what is Jesus really saying? I am God manifest in the flesh. That's really what he's saying there. He's like, do you understand who I am? But then verse 19, Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way and sell whatsoever thou hast. Sell everything you have. <laughs> and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come take up the cross and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. Jesus literally said, Keep the law, and sell everything you have, and give to the poor. And you'll have an eternal life. Is that the gospel of today? That's a works gospel. Why on earth would Jesus say that? Over there, I don't remember the road, brother, but it's off of Muldoon. And I'm driving by Muldoon over there. I think it's Lillian Highway or something. You go by there. There's a church. And as you're coming back, on the right side, there's this church. And this is the verse that it says on the side of that church in big letters. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Keep the commandments. That church has a works gospel. Yep. And they think they're right because they say we're following Jesus. They don't see the change over where Paul says not of works. So why is Jesus saying it's of works? And over here it says not of works because he hadn't died yet. They're still saying keep the law because if you do, it'll bring you to me when I die for your sins. But that is not the gospel for us today. We're not under the works gospel. So he was talking to Jews. OK, you guys get that? Do You understand that? Matthew chapter 19. Otherwise, we'd have to sell everything we have. We'd have to walk here. Well, that's a long walk for us. I mean, is that how we're saved today and inherit eternal life, selling everything we have? It doesn't know. So it must have been a different dispensation. Matthew 19, 29. Here's what Jesus says. Matthew 19, 29. And everyone that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. So I have to say, Mom, I hate you. I'm sorry. I can't have anything to do with you. I have to forsake you. Uh, brother, I, I for, uh, uh, father, I forsake. I mean, is that? Why would Jesus say that? Because they'd have to go through this still. And then they have to come into this. And this is where they inherit with Jesus the kingdom. So in the tribulation, Jesus knew that some fathers would be against their children. Some mothers would be against their. I mean, and so you'd have to forsake them to follow Jesus because they wanted you to follow the Antichrist. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Does that make sense? So that's what I'm seeing is Jesus is saying everything he's saying. And it's all applying to from here to here. Because this could or could not have happened based upon whether the Jews accepted him or not. So do we get eternal life today by forsaking our family? If we do, then I'd be a bum. I'd tell my wife, bye-bye, and I'd leave, and I'd quit, and I wouldn't have a job. I'd just go live out on the beach and just say, no, Jesus said so. I don't have to have kids. I don't have to take care of them. You know, it, See how you can use the Bible and justify sin if you don't rightly divide? 
So I don't want to do that. I love my mom. Amen. I love my my wife and my kids and my family. And thank God I don't have to forsake them. But Jesus told them that because this is still future before you get into this. Okay, let's look at another thing Jesus said. Matthew chapter 6. So Jesus said some pretty brutal stuff. And if you don't rightly divide, you don't understand why he said that. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Matthew 6, 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? And then look at verse 31. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? So according to Jesus, if I don't rightly divide the Bible, then I can walk around butt naked. That's okay. And uh, I don't have to eat or drink anything. I can just walk around Pensacola with a sign on the side of the road saying, Hungry, need food, like a lot of these guys do, right? Uh, they're just following Jesus, right? Why would Jesus say that? Because if you endure to the end here, He will help you when you get into this. So it all makes sense, the ministry of Jesus, if you rightly divide. But a lot of people don't, so they try to force that into today. I've never met one, though, that sold everything they had. Nope. So they're not even following what they claim to believe, mm -hmm. and they're not rightly dividing. Were you going to say something? Nope. Oh, okay. So let's continue looking at some more stuff Jesus says. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Oh, this one's horrible right here, if this was for today. Do you see how you cannot say that this is for today? Because... It, it doesn't jive with what Paul said. Paul was a tent maker. Paul worked. Jesus said, don't worry about working. Don't worry about food. Don't worry about it. it. Paul said, you don't have to sell everything you have. I have some stuff. But Jesus said, no, sell everything you have. Why the contradiction? It's not a contradiction if there's dispensations. Right. But there's people out there that say there's no such thing as dispensations. Okay, you hypocrite. When did you sell your house? When did you forsake your wife? When did you, when did you do what we're about to read right here? Look what it says here in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 28. Matthew 5, 28, Jesus' words. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members would perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. And it goes on and on there. All right. You say we're still under Jesus' ministry? I've never met a person that was a Christian that came up to me and they say, Hey, Brother Breaker, how you doing? I, I would shake your hand, but I can't. Because, you know, I looked at pornography and I felt so bad I just cut my hand off. I've never met. That's a hypocrite, isn't it? Because they're not following Jesus. What possibly could be the, the, the motive for that? Well, in the tribulation, there's a mark in your right hand. <laughs> what if a person goes in the tribulation, takes the mark of the beast, and then says, I shouldn't have done that. I, I, um, will you accept this, Lord? Boom. It's, it's offending me. <laughs> well, it says right there that they be not cast into hell. When Jesus comes back at Armageddon, the Bible says he puts into hell everybody that has the mark of the beast. Yep. So is that a little like, you know, but if you'll cut your hand off real quick, I won't. I, I don't know. But I'm just saying it's, it's an interesting thing that Jesus said there. Mm -hmm. Do you think that applies to today? I've never met a Christian yet that it walks up to me and they got a patch in her eye and said, yeah, yeah, well, one day I fell into sin and I just went ahead and plucked it out because this pretty girl walked by. That can't be for us today in grace. Does that sound like grace to you? So what must he be talking about? The millennial kingdom. During the millennial kingdom, if you read Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, that's the constitution or the rules of the millennial kingdom. And when Jesus is ruling with the rod of iron, he's going to have a very short tolerance of sin. And he will literally, if somebody does a horrible sin, the Bible says he'll literally cast them into hell. So during the kingdom, it's works. It's a works gospel during the kingdom. Thank God we're saved over here. Amen. But uh, boy, if your right hand offends thee, you cut it off. You pluck your eye out. So do you see how what Jesus is saying uh, is very different than what Paul is saying? So you want to get back under Jesus' ministry? Okay, when did you sell everything you had? When did you cut your hand off? When did you pull your eyes out? Do you see how this has to be a different dispensation? Uh, let's go over here to Matthew chapter 24. And this is one of the main things that Jesus is, is teaching. Again, it sounds like a works gospel. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So Jesus is teaching a message that salvation is by what you do and by your enduring to the end. To the end of what? To the end of the block? 
I mean, I'll walk down here to the end. Oh, I'm saved. I got to the end of the block. I endured to the end. No. It's got to be talking about the end of the tribulation. Right. Because then he comes back to deal with the Jews and rule over them for a thousand years. Then they're saved. So he must be preaching over here to the Jews about, now when you go through this right here. Right? So now the whole Bible just opens up to you and you go, now I understand. I don't go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and say, you can't read them. I say, let's read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but let's rightly divide and understand who he's talking to. He's talking to Jews about this and saying, now this is what you need to do because I want to come and be the king and rule over you. So when you understand that, it just opens the Bible up to you, doesn't it? And, but it sounds like a works gospel, what Jesus is, is saying. Um, there's a lot, a lot more. Real quick, real quick. We'll get into this next time, but Acts chapter 7. Go over here to Acts chapter 7. Let me show you this. In the Bible, there are a lot of things changing, a lot of transition taking place. You know what happened. The Jews rejected their Messiah. So they crucified him, and they shouted, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. They killed Jesus. Well, Jesus' ministry was him coming as the Messiah for the kingdom. Could the kingdom have come if they had accepted him? Well, God's grace is so great that he even gave him another chance with a guy named Stephen in the book of Acts. And in chapter 7, Stephen is preaching, and look what it says in Acts chapter 7 and verse 55 and 56. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus, what does it say there? Standing on the right hand of God. And again in verse 56, standing. So Jesus went back up to heaven after he died, and he was standing right there in Acts chapter 7. Almost sounds like he's ready to come back and start this over there, if they would accept him. And did they? There's actually three times that the Jews re rejected Jesus. And boy, that's a blessing because, you know, one God and three, the Trinity. John the Baptist shows up from the Father. He's sent by the Father, and he's preaching. And the Pharisees come out and go, nah, we don't want you. They reject the message from God the Father. Mm -hmm. Jesus shows up, and he's the Son. Mm -hmm. And the Pharisees say, we don't have nothing to do with you. you they called him a bastard, mm -hmm. born of fornication. No, he wasn't. And they crucified him. Well, you know what he says? Look there, we're in Acts 7. Look at verse 51. Stephen's preaching. Look what he says. You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you do always resist the what? Holy Ghost. So they rejected the message from God the Father through the preaching of John the Baptist. They rejected the message of God the Son through Jesus Christ. And they rejected the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit was all over what Stephen was saying. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Strike three. Just yep. like in baseball. Strike three, you're out. Mm -hmm. Next chapter... And Saul, <laughs> chapter 9, Paul gets saved. The rest of the book of Acts is all about Paul mm -hmm. and all about how God goes, now we're going to start getting some Gentiles saved because the Jews don't want it. Right. And so there's a transition taking place. So are we under the ministry of Jesus? Well, we're under the teachings of Jesus given to us through Paul, but we're not under the earthly ministry of Jesus. That would be the best way, I think, to say it. We're no longer under the earthly ministry of Jesus because that was for the Jews. And that's what the Jews need to know. So there's a lot more. Let, quickly, let's go to Romans chapter 11. I'm going to try to close as quickly as I can here. I'm almost done. I can't wait to get into next time. Because um, next time what we're going to look at is the apostles' ministry. And this is called the apostles' doctrine. Mm -hmm. And the apostles had a little different ministry because they were still preaching to the Jews. But the, the Jews rejected them for the final time, the third time. And then we start seeing the transition to Paul. And our doctrine comes from Paul for the church age. Did you know that? There was something that God revealed to Paul that was so important that Paul went back and told the early apostles. And they go, okay, yeah. Yeah, if God told you that, we're going to accept that too. What was it? It was the message that you're saved by faith without works. And that's where we are today. We're in Paul's ministry. But uh, what did I tell you to do? Go to Romans chapter 11. Look at this. Romans 11, verse, we have time to just read verse 1 through 15 and the verse 25, 26. And I want to close with this. I want you to see how this was all for the Jews, and then it went to the Gentiles. And because the Jews rejected their Messiah, God said, I'm going to go save some Gentiles. Now, can a Jew get saved today? Yes. But they have to come through the same gospel of salvation that we came through, which is Paul's gospel. All right, but look at this. The Bible is very clear. Romans chapter uh, I said 10, I meant 11. Did I say 10 or 11? Romans 11. 11, okay, Romans 11. I say then, hath God cast away his people? That's Israel. God forbid. 
For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not, what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Well, the, the early Jews were out there winning some people to Jesus after the cross. So that must be the remnant he's talking about. And so some Jews got saved, but the entire nation as a whole said, now nah, we don't want it. So some individuals got saved that were Jews, but a lot of them didn't. Verse 6, and if by grace, then it is no more of works. Okay, so are we saved by works today? No more. Something changed. That's called dispensations. Right. You know, there's some people out there that claim to be independent, fundamental Baptists that say there's no such thing as dispensations in the Bible. Mm. And you just go, then we got to go cut off our hands and pluck out our eyeballs and sell everything we have and walk around naked? Is that what you're telling me? I, I think something changed. And yeah. it's no longer of works. Now, you can see that if you read your Bible. Yeah. But if it be of works, then it is no more of grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. Um, and David saith, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back alway. You know, to this day, Jews say, no, we don't accept Jesus right. as the Messiah. But they're starting to wake up to the fact that he was. Yeah. And there's several people in Israel that were famous um, rabbis. One of them said, I know who the Messiah is, and I'm going to write it in the paper. And he died. He says, don't open this paper up until I die. He died, and they opened it up and said, Yeshua, Jesus. <laughs> so they're going to wake up. In the tribulation, there's going to be the two witnesses. There's going to be, they're going to realize, oh, we really messed up back here. But uh, continue there. Let's read down to verse 15 and then read verse 25 and 26 and I'll be done. Verse 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. So they fell away from the teaching and they decided they didn't want the Messiah. So because they fell, now we can be saved. Thank God for the rest of the Bible and Paul and God giving Paul the message of salvation for us to get saved. Now, does that mean we hate the Jews? No. No, we don't hate Jews, do we? Now, verse 12. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? Now, look at what Paul says. For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. Are you a Jew or a Gentile? Well, before you got saved, you're a Gentile. The Bible says Paul's your apostle. Right. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? But Jesus was the high apostle. But yet, the apostle for us. So there are, there are different ministries. Are we under this ministry of Jesus in his earthly ministry? No, we're over here in Paul's ministry because the book of Acts tells us about the change and everything that took place. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. So Jews can be saved today, and they should be, but they have to come through Jesus Christ, not through the law. And then verse 15, And if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Now let's finish with verse 25 and 26. 25 says, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. So right now it's like the nation of Israel is kind of blind. They're not seeing it. But the closer we get over here to the tribulation, the more their eyes are starting to open. And they're starting to say, oh, what did our forefathers do? They killed the Messiah. And they're going to see it. Boy, are they going to see it. But they're a little bit blind right now. But they're already waking up. It's amazing. In our day, we hear about more and more Jews coming to Jesus. And then verse 26. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. So when will all Israel be saved? It has to be after they go through this tribulation and Jesus returns. We get out first at the rapture, but Jesus returns at Armageddon. And over here is the nation of Israel. Otra vez, I'm speaking in Spanish again. <laughs> and he rules for a thousand years because that was prophesied in the Old Testament. And it has to take place. So God is not done with Israel. So we must see the transition from Jesus' ministry to Paul's ministry. And we see... 
Moses' ministry, and then God sent John, then Jesus' ministry. Well, after Jesus died and rose again, he sent out his early apostles to go do a ministry. And that was to the Jews. And they were preaching almost the same message as John the Baptist, repent and be baptized. But do you realize that's not the message for today? As you read through Acts, you see, uh, no, now it's only faith. It's not water that saves us. It's whether we believe. So you see a transition from law to grace, from Israel to the church, from Jesus' ministry to Paul's ministry. And ultimately we'll end up looking at Paul, but next week we're going to look at the apostles' doctrine. And a lot of that was all about this right here, signs and wonders. Are we all about signs and wonders today? Paul says we live by faith, not by sight. But if you read 1 Corinthians 1.22, guess what he says? The Jews seek after a sign. So there's a church out there today that all they do is they run around and talk about, oh, we like signs, we like miracles. And you got to go, well, well, wait, what now? Because the apostles, they did miracles. Paul was the last apostle, and he said, this we will do if the Lord permit. And when he died, his last book, he said, I left this guy sick over there. Why couldn't he heal him anymore? Because God said, we don't need those anymore. Now it's by faith that you're saved, not by signs and wonders. So I'm not saying God can't heal. God can do whatever he wants. Amen. Amen. But it's more about salvation through the faith in the gospel than it is about Amen. healing. Because if it was, why aren't all the Pentecostals in every hospital healing every COVID patient? You know, it's because we're not under that. We're in this Paul's ministry. As soon as the rapture comes, though, it's going to go back to all this. And I think they'll be baptizing people all over again in water and saying, hey, here he comes. Get ready. Here comes the Messiah. And it'll almost be like John's ministry is all over here, all over again. It's amazing. So I wish we had time for questions, but we don't. But hey, let's stop here. And if you do have a question or whatever, you can ask during the break. Okay? Thank you for watching. God bless.